Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. For those of you who recognize the ship from the name of the video, um, you probably have some idea of what is going to happen. For those of you who do not, the William D. Porter was a Fletcher-class destroyer where Murphy's Law pretty much hit every time it's, it could. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And um, Commando Raptor, who sent me this scenario, is challenging me to sort of make that happen. You have been assigned to the command of the Fletcher-class destroyer called the William D. Porter. During your time in service, your ship takes part in some serious near misses and catastrophes, starting out with accidentally ripping up the bow of your sister ship with your anchor while pulling out of harbor. This is to be simulated by ramming a friendly destroyer before engaging the enemy, and sending them to retreat because of the damage. So, in the battle, I'll have to ram a friendly DD and then have it disengage. Then, on your first actual mission, you accidentally fire a live torpedo at the USS Iowa, which has the President Frank Delano Roosevelt on board, on his way to Cairo for peace negotiations. Luckily, you narrowly missed the ship because you broke radio silence to warn the mighty battleship of your blunder. Now this one's going to be really difficult, and I don't think I can pull it off. Simulated by firing a torpedo salvo in battle at an enemy behind your ship, and that's the problem, using the aggressive fire order, and then taking control of the battleship to maneuver out of the way. Torpedoes are, as far as I've seen, never launched from behind enemy, or from, sorry, from behind friendly positions. The game just refuses to do it. You cannot be sailing behind a friendly ship and just launch a torpedo. It, the game won't do it. And finally, to top off the chaos, you accidentally run over a kamikaze fighter that you shot down and it explodes under you, sinking the ship, but luckily the entire crew survives. And this is to be simulated by intentionally sailing into an enemy torpedo salvo that should have been easily avoidable. Now that's probably the easiest challenge because I have a... A tendency, shall we say, to encounter torpedoes which were spotted 10 minutes ago and which could have been very easily avoided. Now, in order to pull these things off, I'm going to hand off most of the control to the AI so I can focus on performing the duties that the William D. Porter is supposed to carry out. So let's first design a Fletcher-like ship. Now, Fletcher is a modern destroyer. It's not a destroyer leader, it's too small for that. She had a displacement of 2,050 tons. There we go. I'm going to rename this one the uh, William William D. Porter. Her speed was 37 knots, sorry, no, 35 knots, at least according to the Wikipedia page dedicated to the uh, William D. Porter. Range medium, uh, bulkheads maximum. I'm gonna go for geared turbines, oil, forced boilers. Uh, I can probably install quite a lot of auxiliary systems on this hull later. Reinforced bulkheads, citadel, anti-torpedoes, barbettes, none of those things matter on this destroyer. Anti-flood might come in handy. Install a generation two rangefinder and stereoscopic rangefinder. Um, and then an auto loader system and electrohydraulical turrets. Main tower, I have exactly one. And then a secondary tower, probably something like that. The game is going to provide me with, uh, well, not a lot of options for where I put the five inch guns. I believe they had two on the barbette, or right, sorry, two on the nose rather. Or two on the bow of the ship, so one here and one here. Um, and then I have to draw up a picture to see how exactly I'm supposed to put the funnel down. Right, so when it comes to the funnel, the ship had two funnels, so a dual funnel. Unfortunately, it's going to make it pretty difficult to put everything in if I use the dual funnel, because I'm supposed to have a funnel, an angled funnel, and then a torpedo launcher, um, then another torpedo launcher, and then another 5-inch turret. So that's going to take quite a bit of creativity to fit, considering the limitations of the game. I can slide this one back, and then, holy shit, that's never going to fit. I would have to put another 5-inch here, and a quadru no, a quintuple, a 5 torpedo launcher there, and another one over there, and the ship is overweight. Yeah. 
That's... That's a challenge and a half. I know I'm carrying quite a few systems which might not be installed on Fletcher class destroyers. But I would like, at least for the gameplay sake, to have some of these. Secondary tower. I could use the rear tower 6 instead of the 7. It's going to save me some space. So I can put that gun there and this gun over here. In case you want to rotate something, by the way, press R and T. That's the way that you use those keys to maneuver and rotate stuff. I get that question quite a lot. How do you rotate stuff? R and T. Now, torpedo launchers. Uh, sh <laughs> she's supposed to have one here and one here. That is very optimistic. If I go for these funnels, I might be able to squeeze in one torpedo launcher. But supposedly there is another one somewhere here. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I need the ship to go bigger. There we go. Now I should be able to fit it in. The ship is slightly heavier than she should be. But not by that much. Now I can put the other... Oh, really? Come on, game. Does that rotate? Okay, if you say so. The game says it can rotate. It can rotate. I'm fine with it. Aft weight offset, 3%. I cannot put that thing farther forward. This one, slightly. And I can maybe push the... Well, no, not really. Although, hold on. If I push this one slightly farther to the bow... And then put this one slightly farther forward, where it runs up to the torpedo launcher. There. Scoot this one. There we go. Now I can scoot the front gun back. It's too close. Okay. I have to wait two and a half. I have to wait one seven. So I can scoot this gun out slightly. Point three. Right, since I now have some displacement to play around with, I am going to install um, auxiliary engine and propeller shaft. I mean, they all come with a propeller shaft, but just something better. High TNT propellant, before I forget it, because I have a tendency to do that. Reinforced bulkheads, one. Reduces the chance of flash fires. Um, increases the speed of fire extinguishing. I suppose it's going to be more useful than a double hull. A double bottom. Because I hope very much to be able to avoid getting hit by torpedoes. You never know, but that's my hope. Engine efficiency. We're looking at 100%. So engine efficiency is fine. For a destroyer, she is relatively slow at a mere 35 knots. Now, torpedoes, uh, currently 14.2. I think that's enough, but they are supposed to be 21 inch torpedoes. Oh, crap. That makes it slightly heavy. And I suppose I cannot really save that. Look at that. That's five tons. Jeez, those things are heavy. How am I going to reduce that? This is going to save me 50 tons. That's good. Anti-flood 2. Semi-auto loaders. Anti-flood 3? No. 2. Shaft 3 is still doable. Turning circle should be really nice. 272? Really? That feels really large for a ship like this. I would really like some hydroacoustic search, but I'm afraid that it won't fit. It's four tons only. 10%. Oh, this is 20% water pumping. If I do take a leak... Well, not <laughs> take a leak. No, not quite. Um, if I do get hit, and the chances of that are pretty severe, then at least I won't immediately flood. 
or not fully. Electrical turrets are too heavy. Auto loaders too heavy. Semi auto. Sonar two. Sonar three. Yes. Yes. Sonar three. Very good. So we now have a 175% bonus to torpedoes, which in this case are actually going to come in handy because I have to intentionally steer the ship into a torpedo. Right. Um, armor. Well, on a DD, it generally doesn't matter that much. Because either you get hit by an 18-inch and you die on the spot, or you shrug off the damage most of the time. So, let's uh, have the William D. Porter go into battle. Whether she's going to be friendly or not, that <laughs> is probably up for debate whether you're aboard the Iowa or not. Now, the battle is going to look um, relatively balanced. I have two battleships, and it seems like the game put something quite nice together, although I'm not seeing any stern turrets from the, the mini picture here, the thumbnail. They have one battleship, but they also get a battle cruiser. They get three heavies, I get three heavies, they get three lights, they get... Oh, sorry, I get three lights, they get five, and the destroyer number is even. As I mentioned, I am going to hand off control to the AI. It's not something I do lightly, because generally I don't trust the AI with my ships. Um, these guys are on screening duty, that's good. The light cruisers are on screening duty for Division 1 as well, that's good. AI control, AI control. I hope they're going to stay on screening formation. Then we have Hazelwood, one lonely destroyer. And there she is, the William D. Porter. All right, Hazelwood, I need you to follow Division 5. So take part in it. And I'm going to take the William D. Porter off of this formation so I can control it much better. All right, now for my tasks, what do I need to do? In no particular order, I need to ram a friendly destroyer. <laughs> okay, since you asked. Uh, William D. Porter, I had flank. The Baldwin is looking like a particularly juicy target. Look at that thing zigzag. At least the AI is smart enough to continue steering to the north. Although it looks like the heavy cruisers are going all over the place. I'm not sure if they're still screening. No, they're not screening. Oh, fine. Uh, screen for the battleships. Huntington group. Off AI control, screen for the battleships. This way I still have sort of handed off control. Now I need to be ramming a friendly destroyer. Uh, it won't really cause any damage. But, according to the story, at least that destroyer is going to be out of commission. So we are going to casually ram <laughs> the bolt win. No, you don't get to auto collision avoid. Oops. Sorry. My bad. Um, according to the scenario, that means that the Baldwin, or whichever destroyer I happen to ram, is now effectively out of commission. So I'm going to detach the Baldwin and tell the Baldwin to just retreat. Because she has been too heavily damaged to continue with the fight, and she will need to go back for repairs. Next, um... Simulate by firing a torpedo salvo in battle at an enemy behind your ship, you, well, behind your battleship, that is, using the aggressive fire order and then taking control of the battleship to maneuver out of the way. Again, this is going to be the tricky part because I don't think that I'll be able to launch torpedoes. The game is generally not very happy about you launching torpedoes from behind friendlies. I gotta say, this formation actually looks decent. Heavy cruisers, two on the port side, one on the starboard, two lights on the starboard, one light on the port. Pretty decent. What sort of battleships do I have, anyway? West Virginia and Louisiana. 16-inch guns. It looks like they ran out of money when they were starting to order the third turret. Because she just doesn't have any. At least she's well protected. Maximum bulkheads. 8-inch guns. A couple of threes and a lot of twos and even some torpedo tubes. Whoa. Interesting. 
Uh, standard shells, high explosive, or high TNT explosive, enhanced reloaders, uh, stereo 4 rangefinder, generation 2 radar, advanced radio, and sonar 3. Turning circle 398. That's really impressive for a battleship. Of 51,000 tons at that. Okay, um, heavy cruisers. 8 inch guns, many bulkheads, some 5s, some 3s, and some 2s. Pretty decent armament for a light oh, sorry for a heavy cruiser but for some reason they just decided to ignore this barbette altogether and build a separate barbette for that 8 inch gun she has an auxiliary engine 3 shaft 2 sonar 3 generation 2 radar and stereoscopic 3 range finding cordite 2 explosives all right montgomery uh, this is DF3, Montgomery, Huntington, and Juno. Standard complement of bulkheads. 29 knots. Putting her at the same speed as the battleships. 7-inch guns. <laughs> okay. Um, that seems like a fairly hefty amount of firepower for a light cruiser. 3-inch guns and torpedoes. Complement of bulkheads. Standard. Increased ammo for shells and torps. Advanced hydraulic... And anti-flood 2. 24-inch torpedoes. That can pack a punch. Now, we have detected the enemy. So now it is going to be time to engage. What we have detected is the enemy battlecruiser. Still very far away. Uh, here's the porter. Relative to the porter, she's 30 clicks out. And she has not detected the American fleet yet. This American battle cruiser, interestingly, has eight of her twelve barrels on the stern, and some serious funnels. And I guess they too ran out of funding because I'm not seeing any secondaries. Is that correct? No, she has two triple three-inch guns. We're gonna have to look pretty hard to find those. Where did she hide those? Hold on. Let's play find the turret. They're not up here. They're not on the funnel. I'm not seeing them anywhere on the... Oh, here. Here's one. And here's the other. Yeah. Okay. So you put them on the barbettes. That makes it uh, pretty easy to kill using a destroyer. But then again, I'm not really... <laughs> I'm not really playing to kill. Uh, I'm just in command of the William D. Porter, and I... Well, ideally, would try and torpedo the guy, but he's way too far away at this point. So for now, I'm sort of at the mercy of the AI. My AI-controlled battleships. I'm gonna more or less stick with him. Jesus, what are these... The DDs are all over the place. What are you even doing out there? Because you're not the one I sent... Oh, that is the Baldwin. That's the one I sent back. But what's Hazelwood doing? Hazelwood has no idea what to do. Okay, Hazelwood. Detach. Now you know what to do. And now you're going to rejoin this div. Please don't crash. No, she's fine. Uh, Hazelwood, join div... Hello? There we go. Now, I'm pretty used to just giving the command about where I want my ships to go, so... Having really only control over one ship, and sort of having to figure out what the AI battleships are doing, is an interesting change for me. So far, neither party has done any kind of damage. The heavy cruisers, opening up with our 8-inch guns against a warship uh, that's a destroyer that's been spotted Japanese destroyers carrying two dual 5-inch guns one triple three four single twos and two dual twos and of course torpedoes now what are those battleships or battleship singular How many turrets would you want on the, your new battleship? Well, yes. Seven turrets would do it. 
Um, but this is apparently a very Aladdin battleship, as she only gets 9 inch. She has 21 9 inch <laughs> guns. And 14 8 inch guns. This is such a weird thing. Huh. Alright. Well, the good news is, it shouldn't be that much of a threat to my battleships. If at all. I think the battle cruiser is more of a threat, as she has uh, 12 15 inch guns. Far larger than the battleship. And it's not like I have one of those massive tech ad advantages, because I am even on tech. I have the same tech level. So I'm not sure exactly why the AI went with, well, what's effectively a, a modernized dreadnought. Just a really long dreadnought at that. All right, so what else can I do? What other disasters can I have happen? Well, I could try torpedoing this guy. And seeing if the game wants to do that. Because this destroyer is coming towards me. But as you can tell, even with an aggressive launch, the game refuses. It's going, nope. Can't do that friendly in the way. I would hit the Juno if I were to launch torpedoes right now. Which is uh, still a failsafe that I would very much like on Yoshino players and Nabuki players in World of Warships. Just check if something is in front of you. If so, and especially if it's stealth and his destroyer, don't fucking torpedo. Sorry. Um, <laughs> more often than not do I get um, a an offering of support, if you will. In the form of torpedoes that get launched by friendlies. Now the William D. Porter has not caused any accidents for far too long. So we're going to ram the Juno. So far we're doing a decent portion of damage here. Uh, no, 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 no. You're not going to escape that easily. That's not how this works. This is the William D. Porter. Don't you know what the ship can do to friendlies? Ah, now we launch torpedo. <laughs> this is classic William D. Porter. <laughs> she launched torpedoes at the ship that sunk. She launched torpedoes <laughs> just as the Didi got destroyed. Oh, beautiful. This was in no, in no way, shape, or form planned, but I love it. <laughs> just like that. All right. Um, in the meanwhile, it looks like the rest of the formation is having a bit of a hissy fit as the Fall River almost had a close encounter with Louisiana. Huntington just is completely crossing the path between Louisiana and West Virginia. And San Diego is, I think, following Fall River. So following the orders of the Fall River, which happens to be... Yeah, it's the leader of that screening group. But I suppose the battleships change course. Follow that cruiser. Now these torpedoes... <laughs> they're not going to hit anything. <laughs> the closest target is 25 kilometers out. <laughs> right. Of course the WMD Porter hasn't done any damage yet. Now, the way that this ship is supposed to go down is by me uh, finding an enemy torpedo to run into. So I'll have to go looking for an enemy torpedo. Because she was eventually sunk, at least according to this scenario, by sailing over a kamikaze that she shot down that then exploded underneath her hull. And somehow, miraculously, the entirety of the crew survived. And of course, if you want to know more about the William D. Porter uh, by... Uh, well, the, the story of the William D. Porter. Highly recommend Strakini Fell. And supposedly Salmonella also has a video on it. Just the unluckiest ship. Now, what you can see happening here is that the William D. Porter is trying to stay in formation with the Juno. But her crew is a little inexperienced. 
And staying in formation means uh, I'm going to be about 100 meters or less off of your starboard quarter. And I'm not sure if the AI of the Juno knows what to do. I guess not. So, the William D. Porter, as a bit of a troll ship, is... There we go. Is she actually... Pu yeah, she's pushing the Juno, of course. Because I nudged her, almost like a, a PIT maneuver. Now, the William D. Porter, staying back for far too long, is now going to bravely charge towards the enemy. Well, have you know that that collision ended a while ago? If the sound could also end, that'd be lovely. We have the light cruiser Notori here. Notori carries torpedoes. Ten clicks out. Ah. It's going to be pretty tricky to find torpedoes at ten clicks out. And run into them. Oh, wow, we're opening up against the Notori. What's our chance to pen? <laughs> A mere 16%. Right. Well, if you're going to do that, at least fire high explosive. Because you're... Are you? Yeah, you are firing high explosive. What? Oh, that was the heavy cruiser. I was going to say, that was far too lucky for the William D. Porter. What do we have here? Because it seems like the Japanese fleet has been split in two. Here is their battleship. Their battle cruiser is currently 25 clicks away from their battle... Sorry, 26 even. 26 clicks away from their battleship. I have no idea what the Japanese fleet's doing, but I've scored 1900 damage and they scored 13. It's like the AI just went nuts with their builds. And my battleships are doing their best to stay at range. And just lob 16 shells in the general direction of the Japanese. Whereas the Japanese... Well, some of the heavy cruisers might be engaging at this point. But... I'm not even sure if the battleship is in range with her small 9-inch guns. Nope. Still pointing bow and stern. So she hasn't fired a single shot. This one hasn't either. But there were shells coming from here. So, possibly a heavy cruiser? Now, it's probably not happening, but what I would like to think is that their AI is getting so confused by the formation that my AI is using, and I know it's all the same system, but whatever, that the Japanese formation just went, what the hell? Whoa, engine 3 damaged. Could you not? I'm still going to need that engine. If I want to run into torps anywhere. She has done zero damage so far. But taken 104 from the hit of that light cruiser, I think. No, there was a 5-inch shell. Well, it still could have been the heavy... Yeah, it's, sorry, it's the light cruiser. It's a really poorly armed light cruiser as well. 5-inch guns? Okay. That torpedo launcher is going to require quite an arc. Okay, the Baldwin is still in retreat. How far is the Baldwin away at this point? 54... 55 even. So she'll be out of the fight. That's good. Because that's the first uh, victim, if you will, of the William D. Porter. Now their heavy cruisers are engaging. 8-inch gunfire is starting to rake my heavy cruisers. And also William D. Porter. I'm considering using the Porter to torpedo the battlecruiser, but I think that would be far too successful for the William D. Porter. What the hell? The AI built my ships pretty sturdy, and then they give the Mikuma here minimum bulkheads. They give their light cruisers no f serious firepower and minimum bulkheads. Their battle cruiser, minimum bulkheads and 15-inch guns, majority of which are on the stern. Can I please get this kind of a lock for Taskmaster? Because this seems really unusual. 
Oh yeah, and their battleship has 9 inch guns. And minimum bulkheads. No way. Are we looking at an entire Japanese fleet that has minimum bulkheads? Like the entire group? That would be quite something. Damage done, 2.2k. Damage taken, 177. Makuma is almost gone due to flooding. And all she can do is just throw 8 inch back at me. Anti-flood? 3. Augmented with an auxiliary 4 engine. So she is pretty potent at pumping out the water. But she's also the focal point of my fleet. It's going to make their life pretty interesting, shall we say. Speed? I can do 30. Oh. That's going to make your life even more interesting. Having a flash fire. Ah, you were carrying too many 8 inch turrets anyway. You can do with one fewer. Flooding, flooding, dead. Alright. What's their DDs like? Minimum? Minimum. Yep. This is very, very unusual. The AI went with minimum, 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 and minimum bulkheads on all ships. Every single ship class, minimum bulkheads. At least their torpedoes... No, they're shit. 9.9 uh, .9 clicks. They're 62.5 knots, so they're really quick, but they're also very visible. So if I want to try and get the William D. Porter torpedoed, I'm going to have to do that by manually getting really close to an enemy warship. At which point, the Porter could very well already start taking damage from their 5-inch five, five guns. I am in range. And you do have a decent generator. Yeah, you do have a decent radar. But for some reason, you're not shooting back at the Porter. Smoke up again. Fleet's there. Goryu has been cut down to 66% and starting to flood. I think an opportunity to find a torpedo is from the Natori. She is aiming my way with her torpedoes. It just remains to be seen whether she's feeling eager enough to launch those. And then I'm going to have to try and find a torpedo. Which is really unusual for me because moment, or usually the moment that I see a torpedo get launched, I turn away. This time I'm going to have to turn in. I'm going to have to pretty much stay the course and hope that... <laughs> and that's weird. I hope that I get hit by a torpedo. And not by the 5 inch guns. Which are still holding fire. Oh, shit. That battle cruiser just pulled a number on me. Did you get hit by a 15 inch shell? Yes. 15 inch shell on the William D. Porter, causing 345 damage. Uh, severely flooding the ship. And since I am not an AI ship, I don't have the ability to miraculously get rid of all the water. So it's not like I can get that water pumped out nearly as quickly as we have seen the AI do, with compartments which were almost fully flooded. Torpedoes away. Second torpedo set away. Let's see if I can still fix some parts of the porter. Oh. That's not looking good. Will make for a beautiful thumbnail, though. Thank you. Look at that. Sun in the background. This game can be really pretty. William D. Porter is about to become a uh, once-used submarine. Buoyancy down 16%, 12%. 11%, 15. Come on, guys. Smoke up. Just use a bit of vaping to encourage the crew to do better. Here we go, buoyancy almost back up to 20. Oh, there goes the heavy cruiser. I think that most... Yeah. <laughs> Still the unluckiest ship in the fleet. Um, half the damage that I, was that I have taken was taken by the William D. Porter. 
So that is once again very much in line with the amount of luck that that ship had. Torpedoes are going all over the place except towards the Natori. Now I believe that the William D. Porter at some point also managed to fire off her guns in port um, with an active shell landing in the, what was it, the garden party of some, uh, some higher ups. I'm not exactly sure what the story was. It's been a while since I watched the uh, Drakinifel video on it. But man. <laughs> William D. Porter. Not a lucky ship. In the meanwhile, how are my ships doing? Some of my light cruisers and heavy cruisers have a bit of a scratch on them. But not nearly as bad as the Japanese fleet, which have already lost two ships. Battleship status? Fairly healthy. 95, 96. San Diego, some damage. Light cruiser, some damage. The DDs. Still very much following the battleships. Let's give these guys AI control so they can also go on the offensive. Buoyancy back up to 37%. And I think it's going to stay at... Whoa! At 37%. Sawakazi. I'm not even sure where the other ships are anymore. They're, they're somewhere over there. But that's about all I can tell you about them. Oh, here. So I'm hoping that the William D. Porter is going to be able to get close to the Sawakazi. Although she's probably doing 32 knots and I'm doing 16. And I'm still being detected. Now, I don't know how they're stealth firing. Because normally you can pretty easily see a light cruiser. Let's see what my DDs are going to be planning. Because I did just give them AI control. Or I gave the AI control over them. Uh oh. Hazelwood. What are you up to? Not much. Sailing around at 17 knots. Ah, okay, fine. William D. Porter is flooding. No! Now she's getting hit by poltergeists. It's just invisible ships which are starting to shoot the William D. Porter. Get out of here, Willie. Quickly. The rest of the fleet, by the way, has been doing some serious work. 5.6k damage. Damage taken, 2.2. Half of which <laughs> was taken by William D. Porter. <laughs> Speed reduced to 12 knots. All engines have been damaged. I'm surprised they still work, considering they're probably in the flooded compartment of the ship. Uh-oh. No! Yes. William D. Porter sinking. Unfortunately, I didn't complete the part where it said I was supposed to catch a torpedo. But these Japanese ships were so poorly constructed that... Even catching a torpedo is going to be a problem. Normally there's no shortage of them. But this time around, the, the one time that I want to find a torpedo, no joy. Anyway, that's the end of the William D. Porter. I hope you guys had fun with the video. Um, it is very interesting to see these kinds of challenges pop up. Where it's not so much, hey, I need you to design ships uh, A, B, C. It needs to have uh, components X, Y, and Z. This is more of a uh, an in-battle challenge, if you will. So if you have a challenge like that and you want to make that into a video or you want me to make that into a video for you, send it in through the link down below in the description. And if you want to make sure that I uh, will most likely get to see that thing and turn it into a video, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter, which has the Naval Architect tier which means that you're going to be part of a very select group of, well, naval architects who create scenarios and send them to me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you got a good laugh out of this one, and I'll see you soon for more Dreadnoughts.